be very, very quiet. I'm hunting wabbits. <laughs> well, hello, everybody. Dennis Gebhardt here with Guru Nation, welcoming you to this episode of Rabbit Trails, along with my friend, my partner in crime, Max Masano. Max, how are you, brother? Hey, I'm great. How are you, Dennis? I'm good, my friend. Very, very good. And uh, how's lake life? How's lake life going? It's been kind of rainy this week, but, you know, we're getting settled in and well, you know, good. getting our routine down. Yeah, you can't take the boat out when it's raining, right? That would be mm -hmm. a little dangerous, but yes. uh, I saw a picture of Kellen in the boat you guys took one, one weekend. I thought, wow, how cool is that? Just Let's go out and just float around the lake. What a great yeah. deal. Now, do you have fish in the lake? I think so. I haven't, I haven't really ventured to do any. I've actually only been on the boat once because I've still been getting settled up and running. Right. And, you know, getting a routine. So no fishing yet. Not yet, but yeah. soon. It could be That'll another be YouTube cute. show for us. Yeah. We'll see if you catch a big, you know, you know, 10 pounder come out yeah. of there or something. Or maybe you might catch a shoe or a boot. Yeah, exactly. A tire. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, or something, right. All right, well, listen, it's been an interesting week. As I always say that and on every episode, I always say, wow, what a week. You know, but <laughs> this week's been uh, more interesting than most weeks. And um, I got in trouble, Max. Electrifying. Man, uh, Dennis. Oh, my God. I tell you. That's why I, I think we're calling this episode the quicksand edition. <laughs> because I got myself caught up in quicksand and I told myself never to do that. And yet I did. I did just like crazy, you know, like bad Dennis says to good Dennis. Oh no, this is a good idea. <laughs> I, I do have to say that your, your response was really innocuous in your defense. Okay. It was like, you. it was not, you were not doing a finger wag. You weren't no. making anybody wrong. Not that you do that ever, but you know, it's just like someone asked a question, someone directed it to you. I know. You gave a response, but it's like, I guess we, we could have read the room better just knowing we where we have. were. We could have. Yes. Um, you and know, by we, I mean you. I just watched if, everything if, from the sidelines. If, if Bernice McCarthy would have been with us, she would have said, hmm, no, boys. Yeah. She would have gone there. <laughs> but anyway, but for those of you who, uh, who are not part of Hair Tribe and are wondering what the heck we're talking about, uh, I made a post in another forum, and I, it was not a welcome post. I thought it was a very safe post. To, to make but it was not welcome and I learned that because <laughs> I received amazing pushback or blowback or fire breathing reptile back at me and I'm going wow they came for you Dennis they were coming yeah. for you but you know what Max they made one mistake <laughs> <laughs> only one <laughs> they made one mistake they um they used the name of my mentor in cosmetic chemistry and said that he had okayed the procedure they were teaching their people. Yeah. They forgot, I think, that my mentor and I always stay in touch. So I called him and I said, look, I'm just taking a personal check on myself here. You know, I can't believe all these years I've been teaching people something and it's wrong. Please help me understand why <laughs> you endorse that kind of protocol. And as I thought, um, it wasn't that he endorsed that kind of protocol. He, he did not, not endorse it. In other words, they said, we're doing this, this, and this. What do you think? Well, that's not bad. You know? So, so it wasn't a real legit endorsement, <laughs> but it wasn't it was uh, it wasn't they say, no, don't don't say that. Don't do that. Right. It was context, right? It was taken out yeah, of context. Exactly. Exactly. Which happens. And we all get it. Right. So anyway, I feel I feel vindicated as far as my mental being goes 
because you, you, <laughs> one thing that that I strive for, and one thing that as a company we strive for is to be as straightforward and honest and factual as we possibly can be. That doesn't mean we're always right, and but it means at least find out. Find out the information before you start sharing it. And, and the funny thing is I find that in our business, you know, we are, it's if someone says something with conviction, right? And, uh, or if someone's wearing a lab coat when they say it, <laughs> it suddenly gives them validation. You know, I, yeah. there used to be this joke because um, there were many many educators in this business who, when they would do online presentations, they would wear a lab coat when they were teaching the science of color. And one of my friends said, well, why, why, why don't you wear a lab coat? I says, because lab coats are earned. Okay. When I go on there and I'm wearing a lab coat, I am sending a silent message. And I said, so <laughs> I said, you know, I, I just don't want to do that because, you know, I, I know my place. Right. So I did get a, a lab kind of coat made for me. And it's black, though. It's not white. <laughs> it says Captain Color on the pocket and all that. And I wear that on occasion. But it's just so funny is that people, you know, they try to validate what they're saying by either using visuals or name dropping. <laughs> what yeah. can I say? Yeah. You know, it's like, it's like well, when hairdressers would uh, get together and talk about, you know, so how's your clientele? Well, you know, I did Julie Newmar's hair last week. Did you really? Wow, that's great. You know, now some of you watching this go, who the hell is Julie Newmar? <laughs> she was a very good looking young uh, actress many years ago. Or, you know, we always try in our business, it's always a lot of one upsmanship. Don't you find that? Mm -hmm. It's like, that's why when someone says, I have a thousand clients, I go, No, you don't. And they go, Why are you saying that? I have a thousand. I go, You don't. You don't have enough time. If you worked five days a week, eight hours a day, 50 weeks a year, you could not see a thousand people. Because if you count, you know, how often the client returns, the cycle, yes, the yeah. maximum people you could have in your client base is 400. That's it. And that's, I don't even want that many. That's doing, that's doing 16 people a day. Yeah. No how kidding. many people nope. do you know that do 16 people a day? I don't know very many at all. Right. You know, I want, but, yeah. I want like 20 big ticket clients. <laughs> there you go. That there come you go. every month. Yeah. So anyway, um, it is amazing the things that we are expected to believe. And uh, you know what I did is <laughs> I sat down yesterday and I wrote, <sighs> I said, I'm just going to make totally. a list of the things that people expect that we're expected to believe when, and some of us really still do when we're in a, a color class, like the blue molecule is smaller than the red or yellow molecule. So first of all, there is no blue molecule. Right. I don't get to go buy a bucket of blue, red and yellow, you know, and, and make a color out of it. It's not how it works. Right. Color is simply a visual impression that we get after we mix specific chemicals together. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's, that's the reality of it. I'd, I'd like to make right. it roman more romantic, but it's not. But there are so many people who believe that that's the reason the hair went dark is because the blue molecule added depth. You know? And so, and here's why the color goes dark. First of all, you're painting porous hair. That's the first reason. So the uptake of the product is more extreme. Remember, porous hair is hair that uptakes moisture. It, uh, it, it's more dramatic. It has holes in it. It has rips. It has yeah, cracks. Swiss cheese. Huh? It's Swiss cheese. Swiss yeah. Cheese. Or and, sponge. And, yeah. And all the holes and cracks and rips are not all the same size. Right? So, you know, when we color hair, 
you know, some of those areas take hair darker, some of those hairs not as, some of those hair, that hair not as dark. So when people say, well, it took the dark, you lost your warmth. You didn't lose it. It's still there. <laughs> it's just that the background in color, and all blended colors have background, it took up more background than it did tone. And so because of that, that's why you can't see the tone. You can't see the reflex. To test that, all you do is take a brighter color. You can mix that right into what's on the hair and you'll see mm -hmm. suddenly you'll see your tone come back. Magical. Magical. Oof. Yeah. <clears throat> We're also expected to believe that blue leaves the color hair first. For some reason, we believe that it's an organized process when we lighten hair. <laughs> like I can see all the blue it's molecules. Only... The blue molecules. Line up. Line, line up, up, you guys. Line up, you guys. <laughs> Blue guys in front, red guys after that. <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna take you out. Isn't that true? Oh my god! You first, then the reds, then the yellows. Yeah, and and that was based on an assumption. The assumption is, well, the blue is what makes the hair dark, and so if I lighten the hair, the blue obviously must leave the hair first. But that's not what gives the hair depth. Right. Okay, so here's what gives the hair depth. Now, yes, you have pigment in there, eumelanin and pheomelanin, but what gives the hair depth, makes it absorb more light than it reflects, is paired bonds. Paired bonds, otherwise known as conjugated bonds. So a paired bond, like cysteine, it's like two bonds that share the same set of electrons. When I color, well, apply color to the hair, I split that bond. When I split that bond, I'm now deep. I'm down now re diminishing the light absorption, the depth, and I am adding to the light reflection. Mm -hmm. The other one is a disulfide bond. It's a paired bond as well. When I split that bond, I get more light reflection. So, so that's what's happening. We know that we need depth. We know that blue adds depth when we're taking hair darker. But when I'm lightening hair, the reason that the hair is giving more reflex and less light absorption is because those paired bonds are being broken down. Amazing, huh? Science, baby. Okay. We're expected to believe that peroxide opens the cuticle. Now, peroxide is an acid pH. It's a weak acid. Nowadays, peroxide, because of all the humectants and conditioning agents that are added in, sets at a pH of four to five. It used to set much lower. Well, and remember in the days where we didn't even have cream peroxide, we only had right. liquid. And those were even more acidic. More acidic and quicker lifespan. Mm-hmm. Right? Because if you left the lid off of that peroxide, you were done. You're done. Done, baby. It's history. So <clears throat> peroxide can't, it can't close the cuticle. I mean, can't open the cuticle. It's an acid. It can, it can poke holes in the cuticle. It certainly can poke holes in the cuticle. It but can it doesn't, certainly... doesn't open it. They don't right. open like a shutter or a, like a mini blind either, guys. Right. You splash. Right. The whole you... hair swells. That's it. When the pH is That's increased. it. Yeah. And <clears throat> here's the funny thing. Is, and uh, I, as we've gone on and, and explained more and more about how the science is part of the process, you know, there's lots of things that we as colorists never really learn about, like the um, electrostatic charges in the hair. So hair... In a healthy state, we say, if the cuticle is constricted, okay, hair is in a positive charge. Well, that's not actually true. The majority of the hair is in a positive charge. If all the hair was in a positive charge, then the hair, the cuticle layers would repel from each other and we would swell the hair. Right. That's why... <laughs> When we use too much acid in the hair, guess what happens? We increase the amount of positive charges and we still swell the hair. Even though we're not using yeah. alkaline, 
using an acid, we still swell the hair. Well, I think too with that, what what they never taught us in school, they just kind of showed us this hair shaft with the alkaline end swelling open and like right. disintegrating and then it getting really constricted and melting. But that's actually not the the way it works. It would it constrict, constrict, constrict. And then when you hit the point where you have too many positive charges and they start repelling, it does the same thing as the alkaline. And yes, it does. It dis- it, they repel each other and it disintegrates. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, that's something that we never really talk about. That's why I, I believe in clarifying the hair before you paint it. I always clarify the hair before I color a head of hair. Well, many people say, well, then when I finish with my clarification process, <clears throat> can I apply color to damp hair? And I, I, I've always said, you can, and you can get a result. It's not going to be the maximum amount of deposit simply because you're applying it to damp hair. And people say, well, wait a minute. I saw a class where somebody said damp hair takes color better than dry hair. Well, here's what we know. When I add water to hair, okay, because damp is very vague, right? Your damp might be my soaking wet. (laughs) Well, that's, I think that's the problem too. It's the lost in translation. Yes. So if I wet the hair, I equalize the the electrostatic, electrostatic charges in the hair. So if I add water to the hair, I, I make all the hair that that water, and remember water penetrates straight through the hair. Water, water small enough, it'll go straight through the cuticle. You don't have to swell the cuticle to get water in the hair. So now I have 100% positive charges in that hair. Well, hair color has a solvent or a surfactant in it that is used as a vehicle to carry color into the hair. And that surfactant is positively charged. So if I add a positively charged hair color to a positively charged head of hair, guess what? Some of that color is not gonna take. So when I talk about applying it to damp hair, I say 80% dry. Yeah. So, so there, I know I have a variation of positive negative charges that are in the hair. And I know then that I'm gonna get pretty good coverage. Remember that hair yeah. color has no brain. And, and Max and I, we've talked about this preparing for our direct dye class, is that Imagine I'm using a direct dye that is positively charged and I'm applying it to a, a head of hair that is negatively and positively charged in different areas. And so all these dyes, they see, imagine they're, they're alive and they see this one spot where it's negatively charged. One dye goes there, another dye goes on top. They pile up because they're all trying to get to that negative charge site. Hair color works that way too. So that's why some some of that color is going to stay in the hair. Some of it's not going to stay in the hair because it's going to wash away because they're water soluble. So those are the things to to really think about when when hair doesn't perform the way you expected it to. See, for me in my salon, I shampoo the hair, clarify the hair, cut the hair, and then I paint it. By the time I finish cutting it, I don't even have to blow dry it. It's pretty much already ready to go. It's damp, but it's not bone dry. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. All right. We're also expected to believe that disulfide bonds are broken. Remember that grade two picture that everybody draws on the flip chart where it's the little ladder? The ladder. The saw bond and... uh, the hydrogen hydrogen bond, disulfide bond. And we say, when you break a disulfide bond, you get a positive and a negative. And then we send in our protein and it's like a heat seeking missile. 
it finds the positive charge and hooks it with the negative charge <laughs> and builds a temporary bridge. And that's what people actually believe. But in reality, when I lighten hair and I break disulfide bonds, I really literally di dissolve them. There's really not much of a disulfide bond left. And so it is true that the treatments that we use will strengthen the hair, but they strengthen it not by rebuilding a disulfide bond. They strengthen it by put, carrying in or delivering to the hair an ionic bond, which is as strong as a colvent bond and sometimes stronger, but it's very, very temporary, meaning that you have to continually support it with home care products. So yeah, it's so not that, a one and done type of thing. Right. So when you see people say, well, we replace the disulfide, we rebuild the disulfide bonds. No, a disulfide bond is a colvent bond. Do your research. A colvent bond is created by mother nature. Once you break it, you can't really rebuild it. You can replace it, but you can't rebuild it because truly, if we could put whole colvent bonds in the hair, no one would have damaged hair. Ever. Ever. And, and if someone says, well, our product does it, you can't see it. We don't have scientific lab reports to prove it, but you have to just believe us. Well, then ask yourself, why then do they have you taking home a home care regimen that supports what they just did? And they tell you, you have to use that because if you don't, your hair is going to be, lose its integrity. So you know, we have to really listen to what, you have to watch out for the quicksand. Right, Max? <laughs> Don't get engulfed. It's like a <laughs> minefield. There's quicksand all around us. And some of us get our feet stuck in that quicksand and it's hard for us to Ooh. get out, you know? And that, that, and again, that's, I think sometimes our belief systems are quicksand because we so much want to believe what people are telling us. Right. We want to say, I want to believe. I want to believe that there is a magic bullet. And the thing is the magic bullet is you, your knowledge of knowing, look, I'm not going to be able to replace that. I mean, I'm not going to be able to rebuild it, but I can certainly replace it with something else that will help maintain the hair until it grows out. And until we cut it off, because that's the purpose. Yeah. Okay. We chemically change the structure of the hair and we change the color of the hair and then we manage it until we get to the point where we're cutting it off. That's the cycle that we live in. <laughs> that's, our, that's our art form, okay? And the longer the hair is, the more fragile the ends of the hair become. Yes. Why? Because they're further away from the scalp area and the ability to have some of the natural sebaceous oils wick out on them. They're exposed, they're whipped around, they're beat up with a brush. I mean, if you've never seen some of the hair brushes that our clients use, you should bring your clients in for a blow dry class and have them bring in their tools. It would scare you to death. Melted bristles. Oh, yes. I mean, it's just like product. Yeah. You know, and that drives me crazy in the salon when somebody's trying to cut hair and they're using a comb and part of the teeth are missing. I go, buy a new comb for God's sakes. I mean, you know, it's crazy. <laughs> so those are things we're expected to believe. We're expected to believe that undertones are underneath something or that when we lighten hair, we reveal something. <laughs> <coughs> truth, and, and truth tr revealed. <clears throat> truly it's all you're doing is you're actually you're not lifting you're reducing you're reducing the structure of the hair the melanin you're reducing it you're blowing you're 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 breaking down the melanocytes where the melanin is encased the melanin is then exposed it's going in smaller pieces so you're actually creating more light reflection less light absorption 
but we, we keep thinking of underneath and that's what mentally makes us go, well, I can't, if I put this over it, that other color will come peeking through. And remember, and you've heard me say this so many times, it's not one color going over another color, it's two colors that are merging together. Inside something called the hair. Yes. Which technically is clear on the outside. Technically, yes, you it know? is. You're looking at the cortex through the cuticle. And when we are lightening the hair, we're basically taking the stuff that's underneath the cuticle and breaking it into smaller parts exactly. so that the light gets through, which is what makes it look lighter to our eyes. That's called light transfer. That's yeah. exactly what that is. Yeah. And um, that's why it makes it more difficult for us when we try to identify a level if we don't have good light reflection because it will deceive us as far as the level that we're actually working with. You know, those are the things to keep in mind. Lift is in the tube. It's not in the tube. You can put raw pigment out of the tube on the hair. It will not lighten the hair. I'm sorry to tell you, it will not lighten the hair. It needs <laughs> its partner. You can say <laughs> it needs alkalinity growth. is in the tube. Right. You know, so the lift isn't in the tube and the lift isn't in the developer. Right. And when you mix the two together, guess what That's you right. guys get? Yeah, lift, lift. is a result <laughs> of mixing an alkaline and an acid, like if you're mixing color and peroxide together. Yes. Lift is actually a result. It doesn't reside in any specific place. <laughs> That's right. It's a result. Oh, and then, of course, the stuff I dealt with this week, you know, canola oil in your bleach to keep it moist. Don't come forget on. the Diet Coke. <laughs> I know. Come on, guys. Let's stop with the cooking in the kitchen. Let's, let's stop that. I mean, I just, I, I really find it interesting that, you know, if these, these were like really guarded secrets or, you know what I mean? Like manufacturers would definitely be making additives for their colors. Absolutely. You know, that did, did all these sort of miracle things if it could happen. Right. You know, don't think that if, you know, Jimmy Bob down the road who poured diet, decided one day to pour some diet coke in his lightener that I a think chemist I think didn't think of it first. You know, I think I think it spilled. I think what happened <laughs> is he bumped it, Oops. <laughs> and he goes, "Oh no, I can't! I, it's my last bowl of bleach. I gotta have to go ahead and use it." <clears throat> but we do so. crazy stuff in this business, so you know, I think that you need to be really concerned about. You know, finding information that makes sense. I always ask myself, and I not I try to learn every day. Uh, when I see something new and different, I try to be very logical about it. I say, well, first of all, <clears throat> does it make sense? Right. And I look at the, the the basic information. It's like someone sent me a note uh, just yesterday <clears throat> and said, "There's a chemist." Because, you know, there's a lot of chemists out there now. You know, they're everywhere. <laughs> there's a lot. Of, and there's some self-proclaimed ones. Too. Well, yeah. I was just going to say, I just, funny, I never saw them. I don't know where they're from, but who knows? Whatever. You know, uh, a chemist said that because many manufacturers today in non-ammonia hair colors, they're not using ammonia. They're using something called MEA, monolithanolamine. <clears throat> and MEA and ammonia are like chemical cousins because ammonia is one nitrogen molecule holding three hydrogen molecules in suspension. If I replace one of those hydrogen molecules with alcohol, it becomes something called monolethanolamine. Mono meaning one, ethanol meaning alcohol, amine meaning part, part of the alchemine family. And she says, well, there's a chemist who uh, writes in his book. So obviously this person has a book. And he says that the, the alkalamine that he uses is the only true alkamine that will give you deposit only. And the alkamine that he uses in this product is something called amino methyl propanol, <coughs> AMP. And I said, she said, so do you concur? <laughs> I love that. 
And um, I said, well, I said, it's a stretch for me only because I know that AMP and MEA are both set at the same pH, 10.6. I also know that AMP and MEA are pretty similar in molecular weight. So they're both really very large. They can't penetrate into the hair. So, you know, there. <clears throat> that's why if you're using non-ammoniated color, most of those colors, <clears throat> if they're non-ammoniated, you don't get staining of the skin because ammonia has a very small, a very small molecular weight, about 17. So it'll penetrate the hair and the skin both. And I said, so they're both about the same molecular weight. They both have the same pH and they're both alchemines. I said, and for many people, they consider them to be interchangeable. So I, I don't know that it really is the only true deposit alchemine there is. Because here's the problem in our industry. There's no validation for any of these claims. <clears throat> There's none. Right. You know, it's like, so, so the first thing I always ask myself is like, what do I know about this? Does it make sense to me? If it doesn't make sense to me, you know, then I'll say, okay, so if just by changing up an alchemine, they could ensure when they say no tonal shift, they could ensure that, why wouldn't everybody use it? And they say, well, maybe it's expensive. Okay, maybe it is. But why wouldn't companies like L'Oreal and Goldwell and all those the large manufacturers, the Shado, why, they have no problem with money. <laughs> why wouldn't they use that? <clears throat> so the, the, those are the things that I, I really you know, wonder about. It's like, if sweet and low actually stopped the burning, why wouldn't every manufacturer use something like sweet and low, an additive that you could use to relieve burning? Because sweet and low doesn't stop the burning. It just simply makes you not be able to feel the burning that's going on. So a lot of things that we do that are part of voodoo hair color manufacturers don't invest in that because they don't see the need. They don't see that it's necessary. I mean, the reason a lot of them use MEA is because it is the most uh, easily accessible alchemine alternative to ammonia. Right. It's also pretty simply, uh, it has no fragrance. It stays steady. It's what we call a fixed alkali. Uh, so there's no fluctuation. And, and so it makes it a, a great thing to use. <clears throat> could they use something else? They could, I suppose. Mm -hmm. But it's still the most common. It's like, think about this. We're still using peroxide <laughs> that we've been using 50 years ago before some of you who are watching this were even born. Well, haven't there been advancements? Well, yeah, but we're still dealing with the hair. <laughs> right. When we're dealing with the hair, the hair is still the same, pretty much the same chemical structure it was 50 years ago. My grandparents, your great grandparents probably had the same type of hair that you have. So if the medium hasn't changed, the tools that we work with haven't really changed that much either, right. you know, have we had new, uh, new additions in the way we approach protein? Well, yeah, we have. We found that, you know, animal protein, although it works very well, <clears throat> one, it's not acceptable today because we live in a world where people are very conscientious about animal cruelty and about using animal-based right. products. And I totally understand that. So we don't really yeah. use animal protein anymore. Now we use pretty much everything's vegetable protein. I mean... Even silk protein is, doesn't come from the silkworm. There are no silkworms damaged in the process right. of silk protein. It comes from the cocoon, you know, of the silkworm. So, and we're using things like quinoa protein, milk amino protein, wheat protein, which is the most common today because it's really in vegetable protein. It's one of right. the strongest fortifying proteins that there is. And of course, when people say, well, it's gluten. Listen, 
if the Mayo Institute says there is no way for someone to have a reaction from a gluten type pro and there's no gluten in the wheat protein that's used anyway, <clears throat> but if it's, imp if it's not possible for someone to have a reaction from a topically applied product, then I pretty much say, well, Mayo Clinic's pretty much an expert and that report is accessible. You can probably access it if you go to their website. So, you know, those are the things that we're working with today. But a lot of the stuff we're working with, we've worked with for, for 50 years, but yet people yeah. still don't understand it. You know, the chemistry knowing, hasn't changed. Right. The hair hasn't changed. Right. You know? Yeah. Have, they, have there been new dyes created? Well, sure. There have been. Yes, absolutely. You know, what's new that, you know, we keep seeing in the industry is new marketing sort of spins. Mm -hmm. Select dye systems, trilight technology, yeah. you know, multi-reflective color molecules. Yeah. You know, star-shaped color molecules instead of linear color molecules. Right. You know, but at the end of the day, you guys, it's all color. That's These right. chemists who work, you know, for big companies, little companies, if they could have figured out a better way to do this process, they would have, but they yeah. still haven't. Right. You know, no one's figured out a way to take an alkaline color and make it an acid. That's true. At, at least, least not, yeah, at least, at least yeah. not for very long. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> not to where it's got any <clears throat> lasting right. ability to the hair, you right. know? You, there, there's no way to take a lightener that's super alkaline and reduce the pH of it without also reducing the effectiveness of it. Because exactly. you know what? If you could do that, someone would have done it. And right. I'm sorry, it wouldn't be Diet Coke. Right. And, and the thing too that Max and I, you know, that we have, um, have shared that information over the last few days is that we tested a well-known demi-permanent color. And one of the discoveries, and if you've not done this, you really should, you'll find that certain levels of color have a different pH than other levels of color. Right, Max? Mm -hmm. And you say, well, why is that? I thought everything was the same. It's not. <clears throat> because when you formulate hair color, it's not just about mixing the color together. It's not like acrylic paint. Right. You can't just mix them. Together. There's dyes that will develop at specific pHs. So if the, if, the, if the solution is not at the right pH, the dye won't develop or the dye will make a different color. It will develop into a different color. And so that's why people who say, well, I'm going to mix, I'm going to mix, um, <clears throat> Lanza and Redken Color Fusion together in a formula, in a bowl. Well, the Good problem luck. is that those are two different brands. And, you know, even if you're using both of them are level eight, you might have a level eight from Lanza that develops at a pH of 9.7. You might have a level eight from Redken that develops at a pH of 10.0. Guess what? You're not going to get an eight. You're going to get some distortion between those two colors. And sometimes we do that and we accept the distortion as being what we wanted. And so then I don't even have words for people who say, wow, I mean, that always works for me. <laughs> and, if it, and if it does and you're making money, great. Oh, absolutely. Yes. You know, like we're not like we're not here to step on anyone's toes. No. All we want to do is talk about the science, right? And right. why maybe that's not the best idea. Exactly. You know? But again, you know, this is strictly our, you know, this is how our, our feeling. Opinion, our opinion. Yeah, our exactly. Opinion. <clears throat> and so the final thing is watch out for the quicksand. In closing. <laughs> Listen, you have to be careful out there. <laughs> I sound like a, a scene from Hill Street Blues. You remember, you're old enough, Max, to remember oh, yeah. that show. 
and where the, uh, the 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 sergeant said to his guys, "Be careful out there." <laughs> it's this what happens in our business. You have to be careful out there. Um, there are a lot of places that you know that they're they're called educational forums. Yeah, and <clears throat> you know sometimes you know like that's why like I don't post on certain forums because I know that if I post something that it's going to be rejected anyway, because as I read the forum and I read the information and their be- a little bit about their belief systems, I know they already don't believe the way that I do. Um, you might say, well, then why don't you leave the forum? Uh, well, I want to be in a forum because it's interesting for me to look at different belief systems that are in this business. I, I you know, in my quiet moments when it's just me and Dennis, <laughs> <laughs> Good Dennis you know, or bad Dennis or all uh, three of you? All three of us are in the same room together. And I just, I am, I am consistently amazed <clears throat> at for a business, a profession who talks about being professional. If you see the way that we interact with each other, or you see the ideas and belief systems that we believe, it scares the bejeebies out of me. I'm going, what happened to education? Why well, and we- I think, you know, not to cut you off, but I'm going to cut you off. <laughs> <laughs> it's also, okay. it, it's, it's also like the approach yes. is really, it's kind of, to me, and this is you guys, my opinion, it's kooky. It's like, if somebody says something that, that, the majority of the people in that group don't agree with it's not you know like whatever happened to just go and agreeing to disagree go okay well you know your your opinion's valid too but it's always like you're wrong right right yeah you know and 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 people just ooh, i was it it makes you i mean it makes me not even want to say anything because like right. I, I don't really want that. I don't want the pile up. Yeah, I you know, look. <laughs> it, it's about everybody being uh, being more successful. Yeah, uh, I'm not foolish enough to believe that if you don't believe the way that I do or the way that I and Max do, Max and I do, I and Max, <laughs> Max and I do, we that you won't be successful that's a bunch of nonsense because obviously people are successful. Even people that don't understand the hair are yeah. still successful. You know, they've been throwing darts long enough that they know about where to throw the dart and they'll be okay. Um, and, and that's all right. If that's where you want to be. Um, I, I would love to help everybody raise their, their standard and their knowledge. And for all those people who follow us, we truly appreciate your belief in what we share with you. <clears throat> but you have to come to pretty much peace with the fact that not everybody cares. And, and that's okay. Um, yeah. A lot of people in our industry, they didn't get in this industry to really be a career. They got in this industry just to find something to do. They need a fix. So they'll send out a note. And those are usually... You know, I see that happening a lot. And I, you know, instead of giving people a fish, I want to teach them how to fish. Well, some people, yeah, I'm not into fishing, man. I'm going to sit right here. I want to go to the store and get my fish. I don't want to have to go hunt it down. And we're okay with that. Yeah. But, um, But let's be civil with each other. Let's at least do that. Can we do that? Um, Can we believe? I would like to think we could. There's a lot of opinions. Can you, or is that okay with, with you to believe that? Because there truly is. And again, like I say, this is a wonderful business that we're in. You know, <clears throat> you do magic. Each and every one of you, you do magic every day on the salon. You make people look better than they did when they came in. You help people discover the beauty that's inside of them. Um, you build relationships. You know, you're there a, you know, as I said, we're there in the beginning with them. We're there for their first dates for some of us. We're there for their first marriage. We're there for the kid's birth. We're there for graduation. 
So it's a huge, huge thing that we are part of in this industry. And um, we really give people that good feeling and a good place. And, and um, all we're trying to do at Guru Nation is help you have more confidence. Um, confidence is the biggest barrier that people have in the world of hair color, especially. And a lot of it is because they didn't get all the pieces when they were in school because they were only taught to pass an exam. Right. And so they get frustrated. All we're trying to do is say, hey, here's a puzzle piece over here. You might have not, you've not, not tried. <clears throat> but anyway, Max, any final thoughts from you, sir, before we end this thing? I mean, I think, I think we kind of covered the full gamut today. So, you know, I'm. Yeah, I think calm. we did. I think we did. This is the quicksand edition again. This is uh, episode That's 19, right. episode, episode 20, 20 next 20 week. 20. Yeah. Episode 20 next week. And uh, next Sunday, Max and I, uh, the 16th, we are having our uh, online uh, program called Delete It, uh, working with Direct Eyes. So hopefully, if you want to sign up, you can jump on our website, www.gurunation.net. And you can sign up for that class. We're very excited about that class. We think we're going to have a lot of fun. We also mm -hmm. are going to be, our first in-person hands-on program will be Pinnacle for Hair Color. It begins July uh, 11th, 10th and 11th. And it'll be here in California. And it is a six-day program broken into three two-day sessions. Um, for those of you who are watching us on YouTube, we want you to know we sincerely appreciate you watching us. We appreciate your those of you that have subscribed. By the way, if you want to subscribe, you can do it right down here, right down in this corner. Okay, subscribe here. If you found this beneficial, share it with your friends. And um, <clears throat> I think we're probably going to be doing a live on Instagram here in the next few days as well. So be watching for that. And okay, Max, our ride is here. I hear it. Yes, sir. So listen, uh, it has been a pleasure. Thank you all for watching today. Max, as always, my friend, great having a moment to have a little back and always. forth with you. And uh, wish you the best, uh, best Sunday. And as always, from my heart to yours, I'm Captain Color. I'm out. How about you, Max? I'm out too. Thanks for everything, you guys. Thanks for your support. And we'll see you next time. All right, everybody. Travel safe. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.